Everybody, hi. What's going on, everybody? I hope, as always, that you've had a productive week, and uh, I'm sure you all are looking forward to the weekend and getting some rest. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, it's my birthday today, so yay! It's, it's, my, birthday. Birthday. it's my dog <laughs> birthday. It's my dog birthday. <laughs> and also, just shout out to the M for MM team two nights yes. ago. Minorities for Medical Marijuana was given the distinction of Industry Organization of the Year. Um, I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm gassed up. I can't even think of a better birthday present. Um, Eric, tell them, I mean, tell them how excited we were this morning. I tell mean, them who we are today. Listen, it, it, we're just over two years in uh, with this organization. Um, it started just Roz by herself and slowly but surely uh, we picked up individuals along the way who uh, who have gotten behind uh, what we're trying to do here. And uh, this organization has grown by leaps and bounds and the things that we've worked on, the things that we've been able to accomplish in a short amount of time uh, it's just been phenomenal. And, you know, uh, I, I put on my LinkedIn today, man, it has been such an honor. It's been one of my greatest honors to serve this organization and to uh, be a part of it. And uh, we are here right now in Atlanta, GA, uh, Georgia stand up. Uh, we're here this weekend for our first annual, um, you know, M for MM leadership retreat. So our leaders who have been, you know, putting in the work on the, on the, you know, paving the, uh, pounding the pavement in your communities and your states from around the country have all uh, flown in here to Atlanta so that we can meet and continue to grow as an organization, continue to grow as individuals, uh, so that we can better serve you all and that we can uh, you know, make sure that our communities aren't left out of this green rush. So um, to hear that we got this award just the night before this whole thing kicked off for us uh, in Atlanta, I we've been planning heard this. About since, that. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, 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 mean, I heard about that, I shared it, congratulations. Really it, it is it is is it's a it's an amazing thing and it's a testament to um you know I, i'm one to believe that the universe is in order and uh you know it's a testament to everything that we've been doing we've been planning this leadership retreat for a couple of months now and to get that on the eve of this leadership retreat man it, it's just I, I and then you know the the day before roz's birthday man we we are we are celebrating here in Atlanta. Uh, and I tell you, the spirit is really, really good amongst the leadership. Um, just upstairs, we got some really good conversation going on, uh, talking about what our plans are for 2019 and how we can continue to influence this industry and how we can continue to bring on more, you know, individuals like your, uh, like yourself, Simone. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank and, uh, you, so much you know, so many others around the country who are, you know, really and truly uh, are, are the trendsetters. And uh, we deserve every opportunity and every shot to participate in this industry. And uh, I'm just proud that m for mm has, you know, played a, a role in, in making that a reality for some folks. Thank you, brother. So without further ado, let's get down to it. Let's talk, let's welcome our guest for today. Our guest is Miss um, Simone Kaysen. She's out of Detroit, Michigan area. Um, Simone is a cannabis, um, she's, a, she's a cannabis entrepreneur. Um, she has a background in insurance. She has a background in investment banking and inv investments. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna do her in, in injustice and not tell everything that she does right. So I wanna just introduce Simone. It's important and she's also a member of m for mm And as a business member of Minorities for Medical Marijuana, what we want to do is make sure that if you're a member and you have an area of expertise or something to share, that we give you the platform to share your 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 experience, your expertise with everyone out here who's listening to Canley Talk with Roz. So Simone, thank you for coming on today. Tell them a little bit about yourself and your and what you do in the, in the space that you do in, in cannabis. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So I do want to start off by making one correction. I'm not out of Detroit, Michigan. I'm out of Michigan, Michigan, which is the west side of the state, right? So we want to make sure <laughs> that we make that distinction. Um, we love Detroit, and of course, we have a great, great following. I actually have an agent that works in Detroit area, but I'm actually based in Muskegon, Michigan, right on the other side of the uh, of the state. Uh, we do it. We, we like to do the hand. I'm over here, Detroit over here. So we over here, right? <laughs> so um, 
again, I'm Simone Kaysan, and I am a financial advisor. I'm a licensed financial advisor. Um, I have my license in 663, a host of different things, able to give financial advice. Uh, and I own two companies that actually specialize in the cannabis market. So first company is our insurance company. Uh, where we work with only cannabis and craft brewing, and that's it. We kind of we ensure everything from seed to sale and everything in between. So whether it's um, uh, property insurance, inventory insurance, uh, life insurance for the owners, um, health insurance plans for the um, employees, uh, all the way up to the radio frequency uh adapter that is put on the seed when they put the seed in the ground. So we can actually ensure the whole gamut and we do that for both cannabis and craft brewing um, businesses because we feel like they're going to be a marriage in the very, very near future. So that's why we adapt it to those two industries. Second thing that I do is I actually started investing in cannabis stock in 2015. I took a $980 investment, turned it into a $20,000 portfolio in just cannabis. And so I teach individuals strategies to win in this emerging but very volatile market, right? So if someone is looking for a low entry way to get into the market, that's what we teach them. And we have courses one-on-one and a host of other different workshops that I offer to individuals to be able to win in the cannabis, uh, in the stock market via cannabis stock. So let me ask you a question. How did you get, when did you fall in love with cannabis? How did you fall in love with cannabis? Like, I mean, it's new, it's a new industry. So how did you get in? Okay, so when I first, well, my first love affair was um, my, in 2010, my aunt was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She has gone on, but she fought it for six years. And if you know anything about pancreatic cancer, um, in most cases, even today, right? So we're talking about almost 10 years now, it's still usually often a short lifespan that, that, that it offers, right? Um, it's something that takes on really, really quickly. But one of the things that she did was um, she was able to take cannabis when it eased her pain. In addition to that, it allowed her to eat. So at that point, because Michigan, and she was here in Michigan, Michigan uh, was one of the first states to go medical, been medical since 2008, right? So I think that's where I really kind of started to see how many different facets and how it was more than just a street drug, that it could help so many different things. So that was the first niche. And at that point, I was still working as a financial advisor in Illinois. Now, fast forward uh, a year ago, I ended up coming back to my hometown, right? So coming back to my hometown where it looks a lot different than what it did when I grew up. And just as so many different um, communities in Michigan and municipalities <coughs> in Michigan that never rebounced back from the economic downturn of 2008, right? So we see this over and over and over again in small communities, especially urban minority communities, that there was never a bounce back. And this was a lot different than what I saw in Chicago, because I had been in Chicago for 20 years, and I think it was a slow downturn. But for me, when I came back home, it was a quick, like massive, like this is not even the place that I grew up. And at that point in time, it was on the books for um, not only the state to go recreational, but some of the municipalities, some of the smaller communities to actually be able to take on cannabis. And after I did my research, what I found was a couple things. One, cannabis as a whole only has state rights, meaning that these cash-based businesses only have rights that are state. So things like offering employees 401ks, offering them um, different investments, offering them certain benefits that are just, just goes along with being employed was going to be hard for them. So I thought, wow, we can definitely be able to help in this space. And then last but not least, the understanding that cannabis as a whole offers just about anybody four streams of income. And that looks a lot different than what we've seen in other emerging markets. When we right. saw in the tech right. world, you had to be either really, really smart or really, really rich, and you were, or possibly both. Well, in the cannabis industry, a lot of these income streams you can actually make if you're just a really hard worker. And so I thought, 
why don't we share this world this word one with minorities i wanted to help more minorities get into the game and then two i wanted to help individuals that were providing a service to people that were sick like my um like my aunt the ability to be able to be safe and have um the safety of a business that anybody else that started a business has by offering them insurance right wow <clears throat> and then when you crafted out the four incomes um, the, the four entry points, the income areas for cannabis. Um, what, was this because you did your research or how did you figure out the four areas? And I'm thinking it's because it's the areas of least resistance possibly for entry into the industry, would you say? Mm -hmm. Yep, four. Well, so no, first of all, I went through, if you get into the cannabis industry, so I get people that come into my office all the time. And I think a lot of the time individuals think, oh, okay, I'm going to sell legal drugs, right? You know what I mean? And, and, right. they, and they think, okay, mm -hmm. this is this mass, um, this uh, billion dollar industry, which it is. But we have to do our research. We have to do our due diligence. And I'm talking about even more so than other businesses. Because if you go in and let's say you decide that you're going to do hair, you're probably not going to be dealing with the political and the regulatory risk that cannabis is offering. So no, I did mad research. I actually pretty much submerged myself in the cannabis industry for six months, studying the ins, the outs, the laws, um, uh, studying different states and how it had evolved, even going back to the actual history um, of, of hemp and, 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 and everything. So no, there was a lot of research that went in. Then after I got to that point, then I started to study and figure out that these other entry points that individuals could get in, I was like, well, this is an emerging industry. So they gotta they need some of everything like everybody else, right? They need uh they need insurance, they need HR, they need growers. Like it, you don't have to just touch the cannabis for you to be able to make money and right. still get an at right. the table. Last but not least, I wanted to figure out how do individuals take advantage of this emerging market who don't have millions of dollars in assets. So for my insurance company. If you don't have, if you're a cannabis and you don't have at least a million dollars in reserve, I'm probably not going to take your business. Only because it's so expensive in the state of Michigan for you to get in. And if something happens, whether it be political or regulatory, um, any type of reform, you're not going to be able to pay me. So there's no need in us setting each other up for failure. If you don't have at least a million dollars that, that are in assets, then we don't take you at Cannabis Capital in most cases. Okay, okay. So so let's <clears throat> so let's start right there. Um, mm -hmm. And E, do you want to jump in? Anything you want to say, E, or we, well, we're good? I mean, I I, I did in, in regards to um, you know I, I'm glad she's making the points that she's making in regards to one putting in the time for the research that is is critical. We talk about that a lot. Uh, I think every week here on Canada Talk, you know, you have to put in the time on the front end. You have to uh, immerse yourself in the information as learn as much as you can. Um, but I think uh, she also touched on something you know, the, the real cost of actually doing business in this industry. And, you know, you, you talk about a minimum of a, a, a million dollars. Um, you know, I think that helps people paint a realistic picture of, you know, what type of opportunities. And again, that's a million dollars, depending on what your particular business model right, you know, right. is. There are some other are. things that you, it may not need to be at that level. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I wanted to ask you in regards to what are some of your what, what were some of the resources you utilized uh, to to do the research that you, you found? And then the second part I wanted to figure out in regards to, you know, all of those other services that you said are, are the industry needs, which you're absolutely right, insurance and so on. You know, mm -hmm. there's been a hesitation on on behalf of those, you know, his, you know, institutions to really take hold of yeah. this industry. And um, I, I guess just get your take on what it will, what, what needs to happen in order for that to that process to speed up, I guess. All right, cool. Well, um, one of the things that I did that was really, really cool, I became a member of Minorities for Medical Marijuana, right? So an awesome, awesome uh, resource as a whole. Liking the page, I think this was one of the first steps. I think when I first got into it and got interested, I actually reached out and emailed Roz. Um, and so she emailed me back really, really quickly, said, hey, you know, this is some of the things. Also on your site, you have a host of different uh, conferences, 
organizations, there's other people that are our members, other um, businesses that are listed that are members. That's a great way for you to start to resource. So in the cannabis market and in the cannabis industry, what I would tell everybody, it is a community. Right. So that was the cool thing about having an insurance agency. Our insurance agency is called Cannabis Capital and cannabis people like other cannabis people. They like individuals that are in the, in the industry. So I have never had a time where I reached out to somebody and said, I was interested in doing this and the people didn't, didn't reach out. We are a respected and tight knit community and everybody wants to help. And as long as you are on the up and up, that is a great way to start. So that would be my first one. Find you a real court, um, cool organization. I suggest M for MM. Do what you want. But I definitely would say that was where I started. Right? Find your tribe. And, and I'm being honest. My second place that I started was God and Google. We got Google, right? So there's absolutely nothing out there that you can't figure out that you can't find out. So we are in a information highway. There is more information that is there for us that is accessible than ever. When someone comes into my office and they tell me they want to get into campus and I say, well, how, well, first I ask them how much money they got. That's the first question. Second question <laughs> is, well, in what space? That is, that is, we, because you know what? We can stop this real quick. So the second question that I ask is, in what capacity they want to be in. If you don't know where you want to be, I, I politely ask you, you know, give me a call when you're ready. I give you my business card and you can go on because there's no reason for you to come in and talk to me if you don't know in what space you want, right? right. So yeah. you need to really narrow down where you want to be. So that's, the, that's, that's how I'll answer those questions. Um, we have Facebook groups. There's all type of different things. You need to figure out where you want to be. So the second part of that question is the different types of things, ways that you can earn money. So the first one that I actually talk about is earned income. And those are going to be jobs or what have you, or if you have a business, something that you're actively doing. Understand that you do not have to touch cannabis to actually profit in the cannabis market all right and so we see that with you guys and everything that you're doing you have created a networking uh organization that has turned into this this thing like y'all like the alphas and aka's of of, 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 of cannabis right <laughs> Hey, 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 what, what about the Sigmas now? Hey, stand up okay, for the okay, Sigmas well, out there now. Okay, well, so y'all like one of the great nine, right, <laughs> of, 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 of cannabis. And this has grown so big. Um, I was so proud when I saw a lot of my... Um, a lot of my colleagues here in Michigan actually post about my organization being uh, voted number one at the Cannabis Awards, right? Just to be a part of that is like, I'm like, yeah, we don't have a sign, but you know what I mean? I was very, very excited about that. So when I say this, we have to understand that there's so many different ways. So I had a woman come in today, right? For example, lady came into my office today. She, I, I didn't invite her or anything. She just came in and she said, my sister saw you speak at an event and she told me to come in and come see you. Okay, great. So as we got to talking, um, I asked her the two questions and I asked her next, what did you do in your past life? What were you doing before? She told me that she did a re-entry program for prison, right? So, okay, everything I think about is money. So I said, okay, great. Well, did you know that in the state of Michigan, as long as a person has, if they have a felony, and as long as it's not drug related and it's, um, or more than 10 years old, they can go and they can work into a, um, they can work with a cannabis uh, part. In addition to that, they can work with a cannabis organization. In addition to that, most of the prisons in the state of Michigan offer a horticultural license. So, if I were you, I would be trying to come up with a grant to figure out how do I get these prisoners to be able to come out with their horticultural license and be able to work for a grow. Right. There are HR right. companies in cannabis. I have chefs right now. Chefs come to me all the time. We just hired one. I got a chef that's coming in. He's about to be on the Food Network. He's learning how to compound. He's learning how to compound and how to fuse. So he's taking his uh, he's taking his business to a whole nother level. One of my other clients, she's a travel agent. Y'all know how much we pay for these conferences? 
Now she's gearing them, and instead of wine tours, she's creating cannabis tours. Okay, so, so, so sidebar, sidebar, tell your girlfriend that's the, the tourist, that, that's the travel agency, we need her, because we're going okay. to Jamaica for our, uh, for our uh, third year anniversary in May. So we need her. Boy, I sure will ahead. let her know because she on, and she only does luxury. So she's trying to figure out how she, she's doing one in Denver coming up. So she's trying to figure out how she can get into this thing. What else do we have? I mean, anything, if you ever worked for a factory under operations, the manufacturing, if you ever work for Gerber or any type of food place, everything has to be FDA approved because it's being consumed. That's a great avenue. So there are so many jobs that you can be. You can be an accountant. There's, I mean, if you like to drive, you want to drive Uber, you can become a carrier. You can take the, the cannabis from a patient, from, um, from a uh, manufacturer to a patient. So there's tons and tons of jobs and opportunities and ways that you can make money. So the first way that you can make it is uh, via earned income. Earned income. All right, so we're gonna stop right there. So yep. again, guys, we're talking about the four ways to make revenue in the cannabis market. So the first one that Simone has brought to our attention is jobs in the cannabis, cannabis market offer a 10 to 20% salary increase. Meaning if you're driving under someone like right now for, let's say it's for a laboratory. Well, if you do it under for a cannabis laboratory, you may see a 10 to 20 about 20 more percent. percent. Yep, on the average. Any on job average. you have is about 20% more um, you'll be able to make. If you are working in a factory, if you're a grower, if you start a business, you can charge a about 20% more than whatever you're receiving in the cannabis market because it, it because it's new. It's right. new and it's exactly. you know, I think something else to add to that as well when we talk about earned income, um, the, the other um, part of that is that there's growth to that earn, uh, you know, earn yes. income as well because yes. you may start off doing what you currently do um, in the, you know, a very parallel uh, position, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but very quickly in this industry, once you're in, yep. Uh, internal promotion into other roles and other jobs with more responsibilities, more pay, um, it, it are exponential. And, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that I, I try to encourage people to understand. You know, once you get your foot in the door and you prove yourself worthy and you demonstrate that you have fresh ideas, that you you have, um, you know, a, a good work, work ethic and so on. on. Time. You know, you, the, 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 the sky becomes a limit. Yeah, because it, because the, the the executives in the industry I found are very open to uh, employee driven initiatives. Uh, you know, giving their employees the autonomy and the freedom. I mean, going back to your earlier statement about this industry being community based. You know, yeah. it's very yeah. much like that internally on the organizations. You have corporate yeah. structures, but with a more community mm -hmm. style, communal style yeah. employment uh, workplace. And so that mm -hmm. creates opportunities for you to be engaged in very important decision making, uh, be, you know, uh, put forth ideas and, and, you know, rise through the ranks in a very, uh, you know, rapid mm -hmm. you know, fashion. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. So I want you guys to think about as we go and get ready to segue to the next section, that again, employment is an opportunity and what that looks like. And now that you have a state like Michigan, who's brand new, just coming on. So our charge for Michigan, and this is our commitment from m for mm is how do we get in, engaged with those people that are gonna end up getting licenses or who are already licensed to say, hey, from a workforce development perspective, we want you to funnel those jobs and let us know what's going on. We wanna make sure that we make these make those um, those notices open for folks to know when to go after these positions when you're gonna be hiring. Simone, my question for you, the last thing about this area, how do you feel in regards to people going and taking classes or paying for education or certification and say that they know cannabis 101 in order to pursue a job in the industry? Is it worth that $250 or should they just kind of do their online research, bulk up their information and just have a great interview? Oh, no, I would definitely say pay for the education, but I would definitely research um, the, the educator and what their background is, right? So one of the things when I tell people about them taking my course, right, when you take my course in investing, 
I'm not just an investment advisor. I'm somebody in the industry and I'm somebody with a proven track record, right? And so I find that there are very few individuals who have my credentials and my background who are advising on how to invest in cannabis stock. Because yes, you can use basic uh, investing strategy, but you're also talking about some, talking about someone who's emerged in the industry. So I can tell you about what's going on, what we're looking for. Some of the things that when we invest, when I do the investing, they're not just um, objective, they're also subjective information. And the reason why I'm sharing it is because I understand the industry. So when right. I say that, if you're going in and you're talking to somebody who is doing CBD oil, right? Okay, if they're doing CBD oil, but they don't have a background in sales and they don't have, you know what I mean? They, they're just telling you, oh, okay, I do CBD oil. Well, you know what, sweetheart, that ain't really enough for you to get my money. So I would definitely do your due diligence and find out what makes this person an expert. Because right now I see that it's becoming, because we're getting more and more after the election, it's becoming the flavor of the week. And understand, these people are will not be here in a year because we all know that the cannabis industry for the next two years, we're going to see a lot of up and down. And it's going to be the ones that have a passion and, and a determination to make this community work that are going to be sticking in. Those people who are charging $250 for you to come in, you're not going to be able to find them in six months because they ain't got the gut for it. I agree. Got, right? I agree. So you need to make sure that you got somebody that's been in this game for a year or two or better that has the stomach to withstand all of the hell that we've been going through since this thing, you know, if you really in it, you know that you done had some sleepless nights, right? If you really in the cannabis industry, you. you've been going through some things. Yeah. So I ain't looking for nobody that's been in here for six months because they saw Canada went recreational. Oh no, you can't tell me nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, it, it, it right? Rise on, on that certification point. We don't been here. Yeah, and it's absolutely. even worse for minorities. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. E, e. Yeah, on, on that certification point, you know, when you go to employment, I think right now when you don't have traditional institutions like uh, uh, institutions of higher education uh, really implementing cannabis education as a part of the curriculum, you know, you're slowly starting to see that. But for right now, individuals don't have an opportunity to get that from traditional schools. So, you know, they do have other places out there like Oaksterdam, yeah. like Learn Sativa, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, totally. Cloverleaf. Um, you know, there are a few out there that are credible um, that you can get some type of credential that you can put on your resume and, and so on. And I do think that the industry has placed value in those because, you know, absent that information being disseminated through, you know, traditional schools, you have uh, a need for people to demonstrate that they have more than just a, a few hours of internet research, you know, uh, yeah. you know, of expertise. And but you know, more importantly than your cannabis education, I think you need to demonstrate how your current skills and tools can, you know, transfer to the cannabis industry, and that you have some cannabis, uh, you know, knowledge as well. Absolutely. And just to piggyback on that, I actually, as an insurance agent. We take what we call continued educations. I know a lot of um, uh, professions take con continued education, but I take my continued education 16 hours a year in cannabis. And it's a school out of California, and I get no credit for it, but I take 16 hours a year on the laws and everything else that goes on cannabis. I do that as an insurance agent. And then in addition to that, for my continued education, because I use strategies, I actually use a, um, a service with, um, uh, with, with an investment from Columbia that keeps me on my investment. So yes, you got to use Google and God, but in addition to that, I have to tell you that formal education, regardless of if it's something that you get a degree or a certificate in, you need to be able to have confident conversations in the cannabis industry because we can smell a fraud a mile away. You got to be able to have confident conversations. You got to know the business. I agree, I agree. So this is a great segue. So the next, the number two um, kind of area of er expertise and in earned income and, and finding your way is passive income. Buying and yeah. selling C CBD products estimate to be $22 billion by 2020. Yeah. So let's talk about that for, uh, um, briefly because I want to make sure we cover all the topics. We just had a conversation here. Um, we have our leadership retreat. And our executive team was together and we we're talking about 
um, you know, companies like American Shaman, Green Rose. I mean, you talk, I mean, there's so many CBD companies. Some want to do wholesale programs with you. We don't know if they have 0.03% THC in them. We don't know the lab testing. Let's talk about, for someone that says, listen, and not all states, and per Cheryl right. Murray Powell, our general counsel, not right. all states have or can legally sell CBD. So let's talk mm-hmm. about CBD as a business and as passive income. So, all right. So first of all, I want to say that CBD oil, the, the, I want to tell you why I like it first as a business model. So we as African American, well, no, I'm not even going to say African American, women, period, right? So we know that we kind of hold the purse strings when the Nielsen group goes out and figures out what individuals are purchasing and all of that other stuff. We know that a lot of them, they're looking at families, um, but they're also looking a lot at women, right? So let's fast forward to all of the oils that we've just seen in the last 10 years. So we saw the rage of shea butter. We saw cocoa butter come back in full effect. Girl, I cook with uh, coconut oils, everything. We have olive oil. And so we've seen this oil thing, this oil machine go, right? And the thing that I like about CBD oil in their marketing and branding versus cannabis oil is that they are already going direct to customer. Right. So the issue that um, cannabis is having is pretty much cannabis business model originally was, okay. we talk to a doctor's office and the doctor convinces the customer to to whether or not they want to do it. And then now they're leaving from a medical doctor's office business model to a bar business model. Right. To get to the end user. So we're seeing a whole lot of problems with the branding and everything as we start to see more and more dispensaries. We're not seeing that in CBD. CBD is already branded. Look here, girlfriend, you need this. You want your skin to look good, I can help you. You want your baby not to have ADD, I can help you. You got a backache, I can help you. And so now we're seeing an outpour of CBD home parties. We got MLM, uh, multi-level marketing groups. We have individuals that are um, manufacturers that are actually distributing uh, massively. You can brand. Just like uh, someone has their own, uh, they may have their own cosmetic line, you can have your own CBD line. So it's direct to end user, and I really, really like that as a whole because the conversation is different. Whereas marijuana is trying to convince a lot of new users, they're just telling you, listen, this is a new product, why don't you change? And they're using the same business model as so many other oils were doing before. Yeah, no, I got it. I got it. So then for those who are, if you're interested in CBD and interested in the industry, go back to what Simone said. She says, God and Google, go Google, look at your, I mean, and then you know what? Don't be afraid to call. If you want to, there's a couple different ways. You can go under someone else's brand. You can be a part of an MLM, multi-level marketing. They do all the back, back office. Um, we we support Prime My Body. You know, um, we're we we're in their network as well. Um, I have personally had their product before. It's a great product. The price point is a little expensive in my my you know, but that's mm-hmm. the, that's neither here nor there because when you're sick and if you need medicine and this medicine works, you're gonna pay for what you need, right? Mm-hmm. So I want you. I want to give you guys just. Um, I ch- I challenge you if you're wanting to get into the industry and you want to say, hey, I want to have a dispensary, and you know the entry level into getting a dispensary is very expensive and lots of barriers to get in. Think about the CBD business line. You got to learn your product, learn your business, but from there, understand how do you go and educate a whole bunch of people who have no idea what CBD, DBE, ABC is, and then be able to know that you have a product that can change lives and can make a difference from a health perspective. Um, I definitely say um, look at it because um, some of the licenses in Michigan, even though it's an adult use, you may want to get a license, but you may not get a license. Missouri, yeah. there's going to so be a new medical 40%. program. Yeah, we only have we only have so far about forty percent. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. We only have forty percent um, approval rate. That's the first thing. The other thing I want to tell um, when we talk about CBD, which is really well. So under Michigan, we have what we call the marijuana law. So it's with an H. So marijuana is anything that is considered over the approved 
um, the passable amount of uh, THC, which is the 0 0.003, right? But anything that is under that, and if you're selling products that is under that, you don't have to get a license in a lot of cases. Now, you got to obtain an attorney, so I want to be very, very clear. There is some gray area in there, and as we go on in Michigan, we're seeing a lot of gray area, but if it's a CBD-based, you probably will not have to obtain a license. So what that says to you is that ninety, that fifty, sixty, ninety thousand dollars for the application that they're asking for in Michigan, that if you don't get approved, they don't give you that? All right, so mind you, once you once you apply, I hope it works out for you because if you don't, they don't give it back to you. But if you're able to be under that and you don't have to get that license, you can distribute that oil, right? You can distribute that oil and have a great business. So I just want us as minorities to not think so much in the box and think, oh, I got to touch the marijuana. I got to touch the cannabis. I got to touch all of these things to be able to profit in this industry. No, you don't. You can profit in this industry and never touch weed in your life. Right. That's right. And uh, that's a good segue for point number three, the real estate. And E, you're going to be able to love this. And Simone's going to talk about this from a, from a real estate perspective. Simone, uh -huh. explain about how the cannabis business pre presents an opportunity if you own real estate. How do yeah. you want to make sure that folks that might want to use your real estate to, to have their business and how it makes sense dollar, you know, um, as the industry is starting to grow? Awesome. So, okay. So here's the deal. In most states and municipalities, there are designated areas for cannabis or it has to meet certain qualifications, meaning that they don't, they usually, they can't be so close to a church. They can't be so close to a school. The municipality and the community as a whole have to agree to being able to accept it. Well, the property in that area is going to be, um, there's a supply and demand for it, right? So if you if you look at your community, there's probably only, and, and I'm talking about especially urban communities, because in a lot of the states, we've seen a lot of the cannabis businesses in urban communities. So if you look at that community and you look at that area, most of the time, you're going to probably see a church and a school not too far on every corner. But if you're able to purchase property in municipalities that have agreed on taking on, um, they've opted in, one, to, to take cannabis businesses. Uh, secondly, it meets the qualifications, then you can definitely buy property. You can, it's a great idea to buy the property there early on. So if you know of a municipality that's talking about it, if you know of a, a community that is possibly approving it in a state where it's approved, I would definitely say go and look at buying some property in what they're considering the district. You can be you can keep it and, pay, um, and individuals can pay rent to you at a very high premium. Cannabis businesses are going to pay high because they don't they can they can't just go anywhere. Secondly, right. you can actually buy it and be able to sell it. So I'll give you a prime example. This is a cute Cinderella story. So, so when I first came back, got a chance to meet with one of the realtors, right? And so in this area where um, our cannabis district is, it's kind of a, it's not really depressed. There's some build, buildings there, but they had some strip malls that have been there for like five or six years. Nothing had happened. So a couple of years ago, a guy bought a small strip mall. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about maybe three store, three store strip mall. And because this economy is pretty, you know, shaky, he paid, I'm going to say, if he paid $100,000, if he paid $100,000 for this strip mall, um, and this would have been in 2015, right? Mm -hmm. So let's fast forward. So they, they, the, 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 the municipality decides that they're going to have cannabis businesses happens to be in the district where he bought this building, right? Uh, they make the decision. He gets a call. They gave him an offer for $1.4 million. He told them, I hope it work out for you. So the last bid now is $1.7 million. So three years ago, he did $100,000, bought this building. Now he's selling it. We're looking at $1.7 million. Now, of course, this is a Cinderella story. But what you can do is you want to talk to the municipality and make friends with the people on the council and find out if they're opting in. This is still a great opportunity. One of the ways that you can narrow it down is that if, if municipality A has opted in, 
municipalities B and C probably are not going to let them continue to get all the money. So I would start actually talking to those areas and buying and buying property near the areas that offer that. If that makes sense to you. So it's definitely a to, to 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 get into real estate um, and gearing it to um, cannabis business. Yeah, no. I mean, uh, what what you're talking about is essentially, uh, you know, land banking. Uh, you know, purchasing the properties, and you know, uh, yeah. it, it. One of the things I, I want people to make sure that they understand, though, with that, you know, again, on Canon Talk with Roz, we always like to make sure that you understand the risks that are associated with it as well. Um, you need to be able to purchase the building outright. You cannot have a mortgage on this building and right. use it for. Uh, you know, uh, purposes for this industry. And so that means, you know, uh, $100,000, you need to have that uh, to be able to purchase that building outright in order to, you know, be able to, to uh, be a part of it. Um, you know, I, I think the other part of it is making sure, you know, I think you hit it, the, uh, the nail on the head when you said, you know, talk to the, the your city municipality uh, yeah. leaders, your, your yeah. county uh, leaders, mm -hmm. um, you know, this, a lot is happening at the state level. A lot is happening at the national level. But make no mistake about it: this is a uh, this is an industry that will have local implications for most people. And so, you have to be involved in your local government and understand that part of it. Understand zoning, uh, urban planning, you know, uh, and those kind of things. And um, what, what I hear is an opportunity where, you know, you talk about passive income. So if you don't have those type of resources, I think an opportunity for folks, uh, you know, in our communities are to be able to pool our resources together and hire someone who does have that expertise, uh, like yourself. I, I assume that's the service you guys offer, um, yep. you know, but, you know, be able to pool your resources together and have uh, a, a, a competent team go and execute on that plan. But you're absolutely right. There's tremendous upside in the real estate uh, side yeah. of it. Here in Florida, we have a, a sim, you know, a, a, a different situation, you know, but creates okay. opportunities where, you know, each of the license holders in our state are allowed up to 30, li uh, 30 dispensaries per license. Okay. And right now we have 14 license holders. Now you just do the math and the number of buildings yeah. we're talking about just in dispensaries. We're not talking about manufacturing uh, facilities. We're not talking about, uh, you know, facilities needed for uh, cultivation and, and the land in that regard. But when you talk about that, you know, you, and you start to look at that, it paints a picture of uh, the tremendous opportunities that be can be created just in real estate in this industry. Um, but, you know, I encourage you certainly, you know, seek the advice of a professional. If this isn't your background, you know, you have to be smart enough to know that you got to go hire somebody. <laughs> well, that's a great. That's a great segue because Simone, tell them in regards to, if say for example, I have um, property I own, maybe the land. Yes. Um, what about if I own a warehouse? Do I should I go find a, a commercial realtor right now? How do I go and find someone to let them know that I own this property and I'm interested? I um, mean, and, and there are cannabis real estate realtors out there, but from your expertise, and not just Michigan, but throughout the country. Um, it's right. also about timing, isn't it, in regards to ownership and timing on when, when you know, legalization is going to happen for a municipality or for a state. Right. So, I mean, as we said, as we both, as I've said, and as Eric has said, um, the beginning is actually starting off with your municipality, with your city, um, and with your zoning, right? Because it doesn't matter if you own a fabulous manufacturing site that will be perfect for a grow house. If that municipality has not opted in, you can't do it, right? And right. so that varies from state to state and how that looks. But making sure that you're um, that you're in the zoning area and all that other stuff, and that's what makes it a premium. What we have to understand is is that if it becomes a premium, uh, the real estate becomes prime real estate because it doesn't fit everywhere. Right, so I could have a right now. I have uh, a client from Denver who wants to do an edibles place. Well, there's tons and tons of places that would be great for a um, commercial bakery, but because of the zoning, they can't just go anywhere. Right, right. so that's the first thing to know if your um, if your building meets the criteria for zoning. Second thing that you want to know is. Uh, 
you want to get it out there. So you want to make sure that you reach out to a realtor who is working in the cannabis community. I cannot stress this enough. We have a tight knit community. So you you telling Joe realtor who knows you know a couple of people or whatever. If he's not in the community, your business may sit for a little bit longer. But if you have someone who's specializing working and building relationships with can uh, with cannabis entrepreneurs and cannabis companies, you have a better chance of getting your business out there because that's who we're working with. We're not right. working with outsiders. We're really right. working with people that know the business because it is scrutinized and it's so fine line. We don't have the time to be working with people who don't know the industry. That's awesome. That's awesome. So the last point, and if Eric, if you didn't have anything else, I want to make sure we make time for this because this is a big one. Yep. This is the area that most people, we get more phone calls, more questions about in regards My to stock. Baby part. Yes, yes, yes. So I told you, Simone, when we talked, I said, Simone, this is it. So cannabis stocks have a 52-week average of 200% increase. Yeah. So how can we, you know, um, in a nutshell, learning about when to invest in cannabis stocks, who should be investing, how did you start? Tell us the story of how you sp you flipped 900 to 20,000. But understand yeah. now, if I'm a novice and I want to invest in cannabis stocks, where do I go? Okay, at first. So we, like I said, we have to understand that uh, kind of how cannabis got to the market, right? So pretty much for a very, very long time um, after 2008, companies stopped really going to the market, right? We weren't seeing so many companies going to the stock market after we had the tech boom and all of the other stuff of 2008 in the real estate. So they kind of stayed away from it. Well, in Canada, because they didn't have federal rights, they couldn't do banks or whatever. They talked the Canadian Stock Exchange into saying, okay, we will let you raise capital on um, on the stock exchange instead of what we were doing in the U.S., which was like GoFundMe's and Kickstarters and all that other stuff. Right. You know, um, so, it so at that point, <laughs> right, so at that point, they started to go to the stock exchange because this is the thing. When you do a Kickstarter, it's pretty much saying, hey, I got this great idea. I have this business. I'm going to tell my social media friends and I'm going to give you a t-shirt. <laughs> when, you're doing, when, you're, when you're doing it and you're doing it at a mass market, they couldn't say people, people didn't want to invest money through a crowdfunding because it was kind of like, this ain't even legal. I don't really, I'll never get my t-shirt. I'll never get anything back from this. I'm not going to get anything. So they got in chance to go into the stock exchange. So by going to the stock exchange, they were able to raise capital. Um, and then after doing well, then the, we've recently seen in the last year or so of them moving to the United States Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ and everything else, right? Okay. So as a growing trend, as we saw before in the tech, um, in the tech industry, we also saw that we'll see this in cannabis is that now it's become a growing trend for cannabis stocks to go onto the stock exchange. Okay. What that means is we have to look at it. When we did the tech boom, we heard a term called pre-revenue. Does anybody know what that is? Mm, no. Preach. Preach. Pre okay, so pre-revenue pretty much means this is all before we've made a dime. So tech companies, when we actually started, because this was in 90, in, in 95, when tech companies came in, they said, listen, we're going to be online, we're not going to have brick and mortar, and we're going to give everybody these free memberships, and they're going to take it for six months, then they're going to love us and pay for our product. Well, after right. the six months, then nobody want their product. Because people's like, I mean, I've been getting it for free. So, so many tech companies went under. But in that, in that same mess came Google, um, eBay, and Amazon. And it will be the same thing probably in the green rush in most cases. So, there will be these heavy hitters that will hit. So, in my class, what I teach you is how to pick great companies with great company stories. I teach you how to learn your risk tolerance, meaning that what what are you willing to um, put in, what, how much are you willing to put in and be comfortable 
so that you can ride this up and down roller coaster that we have. We talk about your risk capital. How much money can you put in um, being risk averse? Whether or not you should be in different mutual funds. I teach two proven strategies that you can actually, well, three proven strategies that will help you with discipline and be able to win. And then we also teach you how to use limit and market orders so that you can protect your profit. So all of that helps you in this emerging market and really kind of understand that a lot of these companies are going up and down right now because they're trying to figure out how to get from medical to recreational. And these dumb companies ain't figured it out yet. But this doesn't mean that it's time to sell. So you got to know your risk powers. And I teach you a host of different things to make sure that you're going to win in this long term um, investment and be able to get capital appreciation at the end or earn income. Yeah, you know, I think when it comes to uh, investments, one of the things that comes to mind, you talk about the pre-revenue, um, you know, here, uh, well, where Roz and I are based uh, uh, out of in, um, you know, in uh, Florida, you know, you have companies who are um, selling their license for 50 million plus, um, mm -hmm. you know, pre-revenue and um, pre-revenue. Yeah, ain't exactly. made a dime yet. Ain't got a business model to first or nothing. Yeah. Free revenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, my thing shut down. Yeah. You know and I'm that's a lot of these companies ain't going to make it. And I'm going to tell you right now, and that's why I tell people, you should take my class because I had a guy call me the other day and he told me he was going to buy Wiz Khalifa stock. I said, yeah, you's a new fool. Ain't no way. There's no, there's yeah. no business model. There's nothing there. So to yeah. your point, I got but a lot I of think free revenue. You, you have a lot of that happening. I think, you know, the market is going to consolidate in terms of, you know, you have yeah. some large companies who are trying to buy up a lot of, you know, uh, doing mergers and acquisitions to, you know, positioning themselves to, you know, buy up the market. And, and some of them are for real and others are not, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I, um, I wonder, you know, what resources are out there to help people, you know, uh, you know, aside from yourself, obviously you, you're, uh, your resources are there and I know that you I hope you're you know providing some online as well so people who are not yes. you know you know yes, physically definitely. able to see you um, are able to get that because you know you you have companies out there you know we have one uh, an article just you know wrote about a Canadian company recently that is all about you know uh, their, their motto is a basically buying up different shell companies and kind of yes. moving money around and so on. And so you're going to get a lot of speculation in the industry. You're going to get a lot of volatility. And I think you, you know, you, you uh, rightfully mentioned that earlier. And so, um, you know, I think education is, is going to be by far uh, the, the biggest thing. Um, you know, I, I don't know what resources you provide for your, your folks, but I want to give, you know, our listeners another uh, resource to consider uh, when you think about investment. Um, you know, one of our members is uh, Canna Investment Magazine, and it's a free okay. online magazine where, you know, you know, companies put their entire profiles in there uh, where you can learn a lot about the company. You can learn about what they're doing. Um, you know, uh, I'm seeing a shift in the industry to where some of the investors, the large investors are, are looking for only companies that are, uh, you know, uh, generating some type of sales or yeah. at very least. Yeah are operational, um, you know, so some of the larger investments are, are shifting, which creates opportunities in other areas, uh, but you have to educate yourself, guys. You, I mean, uh, and, and you talked about risk and, you know, different levels. So making sure that you set your risk and your limits, um, you know, yes, appropriately exactly. for you and your family. This is very volatile. This would drive anybody crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, we, I know we lost uh, Roz for a quick second. All right, we um, got it, guys. Yeah, we, it's a, it looked like we got it back, but it may have been frozen. Um, but, you know, we're, we're getting close towards the end. And um, I know we just covered the last, you know, of those four points. But if you could do a quick recap on the, the four different, you know, ways of, uh, you know, earning income in this industry. And then, you know, make sure to let people know where they can find That's you, how they can get a hold of you and so on. Awesome. Okay, so the first uh, way of earned income is you actively producing it. So whether you start a business that's outside um, of actually touching cannabis or you actually get a job. So looking at the, the key to that is looking at what you've done in your past um, and how you can leverage that into being successful. This is a growing industry and at, we need everything. So 
there's pretty much very few jobs that you've had in the past. Uh, I mean, even if you worked at McDonald's, you could work at it. You could be, you know, you could work as a butt tender or, you know what I mean? You have customer service. So looking at how do you leverage what you've done in your past life um, or your past careers or your certificates or whatever you've done so that you can operate in the cannabis industry in a, in a space of passion, right? In a space Absolutely. of passion. That's really, really important because this is, this is not an easy, it ain't an easy leg. So you're going to have to have a little passion when you're doing it. Um, second thing is passive. When we're talking about selling and buying, definitely one of the things that we see is so is growing a lot is the CBD oil. Very, very important. CBD business um, definitely takes a little bit less of a startup. You can start a CBD business as low as a hundred dollars and as high as eighty million um eighty million dollars so the world is your oyster do your research do your due diligence um number three is the real estate being able to understand the zoning and actually participate um in a area that has approved and um, do your due diligence to land bank and a host of other things, but it is opportunity and a lot of growth in real estate. And then last but not least, of course, my favorite, if you work with me, I actually give you a list of 20 of my favorite uh, stocks that have a proven revenue. I help you with your risk tolerance. We teach you uh, uh, trading strategies. A bad strategy is better than no strategy. We teach you great strategies to be able to win. And then we also teach you how to profit and um, how to actually protect your profit by using market orders, calls, and puts. You can do your, um, you can do everything online, one-on-one -on -one with me. And not only that, you get a one-on-one, -on -one, you get a host of different homework, you get all these different sessions, we keep it action-packed. And then last but not least, after you finish with me, we email you a recording of everything so you can always be able to have that and the note on everything that you actually learned with me. Um, so by the time you finish with me, you can go online and you can see the testimonials. You will be able to tell CNN what stock to buy. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Hey, listen guys, I'm sorry my computer's doing some funky wonky stuff, but you know what, Simone, I, I, think, I think we need to think about this from a strategy standpoint. How can we, maybe would you be willing to give um, Stocks is the biggest thing that comes around and that something is easy or what have you. Could you maybe give something like a monthly, I don't know if you want to call it stock advice, but just say, hey, here's what I can. Okay. Yeah, we actually do it. You know what? I have a blog, but I could definitely do it for um, M4. And, and of course, I would love to do that. And uh, we can go through some stocks and, and some strategies, but I, I do those all the time. Um, and then I'm also um, the financial con uh, contributor to several magazines or whatever. So that is so, so easy. We can do that. I have a magazine out of Portland, um, one out of Grand Rapids that we're actually doing. I think my first issue comes out this month. It's, it's in grander so i'm in grander everybody it's uh it comes out this month so we will definitely do the same for m44 uh m no m4 mm i would love to do that it would be my honor it's okay it take a minute you you get it but um i think it's important um the uh, um we are our um motto and our mantra for 2019 is having a servant's heart and being intentional a servant heart yep. means going back and helping other people who may not have access. You don't have to do the homework for them, but at least. <laughs> I think she might have froze up again. Yeah, she's <laughs> All right, but I, 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 know, I definitely I, being able to contribute um, would be my honor. We'll be able to do that. We can work that out. You guys yeah. get me, get me the information. We'll work this thing out. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I think uh, one of our themes for this leadership retreat here in Atlanta is, uh, like she said, having a servant's heart and, uh, you know, just the whole concept and idea of servant leadership. Uh, I think we got you back, Roz. Go ahead. Finish oh, your statement. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. All I was saying was, um, so thank you. We need that. And then the other thing is being intentional. We promised in 2019 that we're going to have, we're not going to talk about the same thing that we already know. We're not going to talk about, hey, this is what, you know, invest in real estate or what have you or, or invest in stocks. We're going to come up with solutions. We're going to give you guidance. So, Simone, thank you so much for being on today with us. Um, Eric, parting words, your thoughts. Four, Absolutely. Four streams, four streams of revenue in this industry uh, we talked about today. What, what's your thoughts? 
brother. You know, my, my overall thought is always uh, truly, you know, start with education, um, but, you know, decide, make a decision as to whether or not this is the industry you want to be in and get behind it and go after it. You know, um, as always, I, uh, you know, I thank you all for being with us today. Thank you, Simone, for coming on. Um, you know, I was just going to say real quick, how can they find you? I really enjoy myself. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, where can they find you? Give us a website. So definitely, you can find me at www.c-c-i-m-o-n-e-c-a-s-s-o-n. So c-simonecaseign.com. So you can meet me. And so put, make sure you put a C before it. So c-simone with the letter C, caseign with the letter C. Dot com. So C C I M O N E C A S S O N dot com. And you can find all of my courses. You can go on, you can download, you can uh, book a strategy call. You can follow me on Facebook at C Simone dot com, uh, at C Simone, yeah, C Simone K sign. You can follow me on Facebook. And I think we tagged everything in here too. So definitely reach out to me, inbox me. Follow me. Um, I give tips and tools on investments and all these money things. And I, I like money and weed, so I tell them I'm the dopest chick on their timeline. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you know, thanks again to our audience, uh, you know, for everyone tuning in this week. Um, you know, next week, bring somebody else. Make sure they tune in. Uh, we're here every Friday, Can of Talk with Roz. I'm your co-host, Eric Range. I wish you much love and rest this weekend. Enjoy your families, enjoy your communities, and uh, until next week, signing off. Uh, take it easy, everybody. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Are we off? Okay, we're off. Okay. Bye, guys. All right. How was it? Rosin froze up again. I see. I see. I think it may okay, be shut down. I have down. a question. I got a question, Eric. Okay. So before I right, used to get on. these emails. Hold on. Simone, oh, okay. let, let me yeah. call you on the phone uh, real quick because I think this is going to end up shutting off, uh, okay, especially cool. for computers. So All right, let me. No problem. Uh, you I'll get your number, number from Roz and I'll call you. Okay, cool. You got All it. Right. Thanks.